Hello everybody and welcome to today's elevator part project. On this project, I'm going to be working on this Montgomery Vector elevator car panel. Now this is a piece that we've been wanting to get for a long time now. And I must give a huge shout out to Rafe from San Antonio for acquiring and giving us this amazing piece. This piece is currently en route to Roanoke, Virginia, but before it gets there, it needs to have a few things done to it here in St. Louis. Now this panel came from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. And you can see here, it is a really neat and unique vector panel featuring the Montgomery VFD indicator, a rather non-standard style layout of floor buttons, some custom labels next to each of the floor buttons, and an entire array of lockout key switches on the bottom. So this is what a typical Montgomery Vector elevator panel looks like, and you can see how that compares to ours. So since this panel will be displayed in the elevator museum, I want it to be as exciting as possible for visitors. That's why I'm going to be building a complete elevator simulator utilizing as many features of this panel as possible. So it'll have your basic features such as pressing a floor button and having the indicator cycle up to that floor. In addition, it'll have working fire service, an alarm bell, and a floor passing chime. So before I get started with building the simulator, let's take a closer look at both the front and back of the panel so we can see all the different features this thing has to offer. So starting down here at the bottom, we have some of the basic controls such as door open, door close, alarm, call cancel, run stop, which this is a toggle switch, fire service key switch, and the phone jack. If you look closer at the fire service, it says fire off, hold, and on. There is a red light bar in the middle and the key switch. And the key switch is three positions, of course, off, hold, and on. Here across is a capacity plate. So this one was 4,500 pounds. And then up here, we have all of the lockout key switches. And so these here, we can turn these on and off. And here we have the five floor buttons. One, two, three, four, and five with two being the main level. You can see here, these are the labels, and this is what each of the labels say. However, these were relabeled. This here is what they used to say. Now, Andrew has chosen to leave these newer labels on top, so that is what we are going to do. So next we have the service cabinet. Now, this service cabinet is a little bit different because there is an actual lock on this one. Now, this was something that was added in because most Montgomery vectors do not come with a lock like this. If we open it up, you can see inside, this is what the service cabinet looks like. So up here on the top is the fan switch. So low, off, and high. The car light, the work light, which I'm assuming is like the car top light. The front photo cell, which do not touch, leave on, very angry. Here's the rear photo cell, if applicable. There's these controller spots, controller on off. I'm not sure what that would ever be used for. Independent service, a couple more blank spots, and power outlets. And in addition, we have this inspect key switch which you would turn it to that to turn inspection on. Now, like I said before, this lock was added on. So you can see here how they added this metal piece to kind of latch it. But the original latch is still on this panel and you can kind of see how it works. So there's this little, little latch on the side here, this metal piece, and that actually locks down into this little bar here. So what you would have to do for that is on the side of the panel, there's actually this little hex screw. Use a little Allen wrench to turn that which this is really hard to do with one hand, but you would actually turn this to lift this bar up and then it would lock down. And now you can see here that even though key is unlocked, I can't actually, I mean, I could pry this open if I really wanted, but just by hand, it, it's not gonna pop open. So you would have to turn that Allen key and then pop it open like that. And then finally up here at the top, we have the Montgomery VFD, which is a very cool display. Now I've also seen vectors with the analog display, but I definitely think this digital version is going to be more exciting to have in the elevator museum. And then of course you can't forget the Montgomery logo right here. So turning the panel to the back, we can take a look at all the circuitry and other components on the back side. So starting down here at the bottom, the first thing you might notice are all of these cutouts. And like a lot of elevator panels, this was a modular design. So you could kind of pick and choose what sections you wanted to use and have modular parts that would go into each one. So like up here, you can see we have the circuit boards for all the floor buttons. Down here are some key switches. Here are standalone buttons with no lights and then the fire service key switch as well. So here is the phone jack. Here's the fire service key switch. And the circuit board is for the red light bar. These are all standalone buttons and you can see how they're mounted down. There's just a locking piece in there to hold the button 
into the housing, and then the contact gets screwed down onto these side bits. There's what the stop run switch looks like from the back. Here are all the key switches, and these are super simple. So up here we have the button circuit boards. Now these are also designed to be modular. If you look really closely, we have S12, S11, S10, all the way down to S1. So there could actually be up to 12 buttons on each one of these boards. And then we also have the output lines for each of the 12 plus your power in up here. I'm not totally sure what these connectors were used for. When I first got this, there was some wiring coming off these, which went into this connector, which then plugged into here. Moving up here, this is just a terminal board for a bunch of various things, fan, light, power, pretty much all 120 volt stuff is what it looks like. So here are the three switches. So the fan lights and work lights, and then the photo cell and independent switches. And then here's the key switch, which has no contact on the back, but I don't really care. Now up here is the speaker. And you can see there's nothing on here right now because I took off the chime. So this is the chime module that I'm going to be putting back onto this panel. So it would actually get mounted right here. And finally up here, we have the Montgomery VFD. And this here is the indicator that we saw earlier. So for this project, I have written some custom software that can actually control this indicator. However, if you have one of these and want to make it do something, this little jumper will be your friend. If you move this jumper from the two and three position to the one and two position, it activates a test mode, which will cycle the indicator through its entire memory all the way up and all the way back down. Let's take a look at how that works. All right, so I've got my power connector on here and providing it at 120 volts. And you can tell when the indicator is alive by the blinking red light. If you look closely, the indicator is completely blank. However, if I remove the jumper from the back and if I reinstall it into the two terminals I said before, you can see that it starts going up. It turns the arrow on and it starts cycling through the entire memory. In this case, it goes from one to 30 and it has a bunch of different letters, but this is kind of not useful for a simulator. So for the simulator implementation, I obviously don't want to be using a test mode because I have no control over the indicator. So one of the big things I did before starting this project was figure out how to interface with the Montgomery VFD. And that resulted in this software that I made. So this here is a little user interface that has every single combination of characters or letters or whatever that you want to display on the indicator. So there's a pre-installed symbol library on these indicators and these are all the things that we can display. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to it um, and we will select one and you can see here the one comes on. So for the simulator, it would obviously be pretty simple. The up arrow would go on and you would just kind of cycle up to the floor that you select. So in this case, we will go up to five. Unfortunately, because of how this simulator is going to be built, we won't get to see most of the other characters. So here is the list of all the characters and I'll go ahead and display a few of them for you. So the numbers will go all the way up to 30. So there's 30. We've got a few letters. Uh, we've got A, C, I guess B is in there too. They're kind of out of order, which is kind of confusing, but so you have some single letter characters. Uh, you also have things like B1, B2, so if you want like basements, there's even like sub basement. If you've got like a mall, you have like lower level or upper level. So those are in there as well. Uh, parking levels, if you want to do like P1, P2, P3, it actually goes down to P5. And while we're on the P's, we go to penthouse, the opposite side of the building. So penthouse is in there. This one's kind of funny. Mm. And then of course you can turn on and off the arrows as well. So like there's the down arrow and there's the up arrow. So I guess with that, I guess it's time to get started with the project. So after many hours of wiring, I have the hardware portion of the simulator implemented. Now with that, not everything is fully functional yet. I'm currently running my test software on here just for testing purposes, but you can see here, the buttons light up. They don't latch yet, so they just, they just light up. 
which looks cool. We also have the alarm down here, which works. Uh, the fire service key is actually set to on right now, but that's another software implementation. Um, I actually did not implement the lockout key switches. Uh, I kind of got to the point where I already started wiring and I could not be bothered to go back and wire them up. These aren't gonna work and I don't really care because let's be real, why would we actually lock out the floors? So back here, uh, you can kind of see all the different lights that are on here for some of the different modules. Uh, I end up actually having to do a quick design change uh, kind of midway through kind of rewire how some things worked. Everything seems to be working now as intended. I do have the indicator pulled up right now with the uh, with the test software here, just to kind of play around with it. And something I did actually do uh, to the test software was to test out the chime. So you can see there when I change the floor, it just does the chime. And that's all it does. It just, it just chimes when it changes, kind of for testing purposes, but it sounds cool. All right, I have finished wiring and programming this panel and the simulator is finished. We're gonna take a quick look at everything this thing can do. So you can see here when you power it up, it lights up the one. And just like any old elevator simulator, you can press what floor you wanna to go to. It is selective collective. So in this case, we'll go up to three. And then after a timeout period, we will go up to five. As the working chime. Let's go back down to one. Here are one. Let's go into a couple floors, two, four, and five, and you can see how the, uh, the LEDs look here. It also has an alarm. And it also has fire service phase two. So there is no phase one on this, but we can turn on the fire here. You see the light turns on. First things first, you can select floors and then clear them with call cancel. To make the elevator go to a floor, you can select your floor and then hold the door close button for a second and it'll go up. So let's take it back down to one. And when you're done with fire service, turn it back off. So that was the Montgomery Vector Simulator Project. This panel tomorrow, actually, will be going down to the Elevator Museum for it to be enjoyed by everybody else. So if you make it down to the Elevator Museum, be sure to check out this really awesome panel. I put a lot of time and energy into this thing for everyone to enjoy. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.